Okay guys, what's up? Um, I'm about to tell you how I built the frame for my solar collector. The solar collector is gonna be a screen solar collector and the frame is um, with wood that I just got from your home store. Like, um, I tend to think that the wood prices at Home Depot are a little bit better, um, but it might depend on your, your area. So um, I, I'll tell you what I used first and then I'll show it to you. Um, I used two one by sixes that are each 10 feet long. I used one two by six that was eight feet long. And then I used two um, of these pieces of strapping at, um, this is like, it's a little less than, one, it's, it's smaller than a one by two and it's eight feet long. I used two of these pieces and um, this stuff costs 98 cents per piece um, at Menards, but I'm sure that they have it at all the other home stores too. And then I also used, um, I bought uh, two packets of brackets with screws. Those were about two bucks each. I got them at Menards. I'll show you those. And they came with this, with the screws and with the brackets. So I used a total of six brackets and I got two packs of four. So I got two brackets left over. Um, and then I used uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I used eight other um, two and a half inch screws that I had left over from a different project. So let me show you now what I have done. And I'll say um, if I could do this thing again, just the frame, um, I would say I might consider just putting a solid piece of, you know, three eighths inch plywood or OSB um, on the back of the collector because it might be a little less labor intensive. Here's the two by six up there and the two by six down there. And these two cross pieces, that big one and that one up there, those are both, uh, those are two by sixes uh, and those are cut in half. So that's, that's four feet and that's four feet. This one by six up here is 10 feet long. So you got a foot extra up here and a foot extra down there. And the same thing for that one down there. And then these inner pieces are the strapping that I got for 98 cents per piece for an eight, look, for an eight foot long piece. So there they are. And then on the corners, guys, I'll use this one up here. I just, um, I just uh, used a speed square and just cut a cross section here just to add a little extra support in there. And then I screwed in um, there on the corner so that's nice and, and, and solid. Um, a couple of tips uh, when doing this. Oh yeah, here guys, and here's, here's the brackets that I, I, I got. So these brackets were uh, 90, or a dollar ninety eight for a four pack of brackets with those little screws, and you can see what I did there. Okay, I put in uh, three screws there on on each of the ends to make the the outer square. And then the reason I did it this way is because um, this is going to be a vertical collector, and this way this is going to be the bottom of my collector down here, guys. Now the bottom of the collector will sit off of the ground. Um, and I was thinking, I think one of the other guys had like mounted wheels here so that he could wheel it around and he actually put a handle up there at the top part. So that might be something that you consider. So anyway, uh, this is just the wood part. This is the frame of the collector. And um, if I could do anything differently, I might consider, like, like I said, just buying a, like a, a four by eight sheet of plywood or OSB um, cause it might be a little less labor intensive. Uh, let me say something about how I, uh, drilled these holes in. So guys, this wood right here is pretty thin. This is a one by six and one by six is the dimensional measurements, but in actuality, it's actually less than an inch here and less than six inches here. It's like 0.75 inches and like five and a half here or something. Well, if I just put a screw into this, it could split this wood. So I'll show you what I end up doing. I want the, if, if I'm screwing this top piece into a piece un, uh, underneath it, I want the top piece to let the entire screw go all the way through and the threads. I, I don't want the, the screw to be biting into the top wood at all. The only thing that's pulling the top wood down to the bottom piece is the head of the screw. So you gotta go get a, a, a drill bit 
and the drill bit needs to be as wide as the screw and the thread. So if you hold the, the bit up to the screw, the bit should completely cover the entire screw, okay? So then you, you take your first bit and you drill through this piece of wood so that you could literally just take the screw and drop it and it would fall all the way through and it'd rest on the head of the screw. Then the under piece, you, t you take a, a smaller bit and you hold the smaller bit up to the screw and you just want, w when you hold them up back to back, you just want, you want the shaft of the, um, of the bit to block out only the shaft of the screw so that when you hold it up, all you see are the threads on the outside because you only want the threads to be biting into the under piece of wood. And then the threads are gonna pull the under piece of wood up to the top piece, okay? So I had to do that, um, I had to pre-drill on um, all of these strapping pieces so I did not, um, so I did not split the wood because this is thin stuff. So um, it was a little extra work, but I'm trying to do it right. This is my first collector I'm living in and learning here. But that's what I would recommend if you did this yourself. If you have questions about that, um, drop a comment below. But if you just look up how to attach two pieces of wood using a screw, a bunch of guys who know way more about this than I do will tell you the same thing, okay? The tools that I used to uh, build this were I used a speed square. Um, this thing is like five, five bucks. I used a, a reciprocating or a, like a circular saw, okay? Okay. I used a uh, drill, okay? You already saw it before, but I used drill bits. I only needed these, these two sizes. And the, the drill bit is gonna depend on the size of the screws that you're using, okay? I used my tape measure um, because all of, so um, I used a tape measure and um, and then I use hearing protection when I use the circular saw. And I didn't, but I should have wore eye protection too. Um, and then I'll just say something is, the reason I built a four by eight collector was because um, you want, like guys kept saying, go bigger, go bigger, go bigger, right? Because if this thing is gonna kick off heat, you know, you might as well go as big as you can, right? Well, when you, like a lot of the materials that you're gonna buy are set up to, where you can build a four by eight collector like, and the materials will just fit, right? Like pieces of plywood are four by eight. Pieces of you know, uh, foam insulation are four by eight. You know? Two by fours are two inches by four inches by eight feet long, right? So like stuff is just, it's just easy to get materials that are already gonna fit that size, okay? So that's why this is gonna be a four by eight collector. When I say four by eight, I mean the size of the opening here, right? This is four feet by eight feet long, okay? So that four by eight sheet of uh, insulation will fit snugly right in here. Now, because that sheet of four by eight fits snugly in this hole, guess what? I also have to insulate the sides of the frame. So I had to go out and buy a second piece of insulation. So if you're on a budget or you're trying to do this as cheaply as possible and you wanna make as big of a collector as you can, you might consider making it a little smaller than four by eight because you're gonna need extra insulation for the sides and you might not wanna to have to go out and buy another four by eight sheet of insulation. So just something to think about that I didn't think about ahead of, uh, of time. Um, I was gonna say something else. Oh yeah, uh, these pieces of strapping here on the bottom are all two feet apart, okay? So from, from there to there is two feet, from there to there is two feet, from there to there is two, and there to there is two. And then I put those corner pieces up just to give it a little extra uh, support. Okay, just one, two, three, and four. Okay, um, and then this is also untreated wood. So there's no chemicals in it. I mean, there's probably some chemicals, but there's less than if it was treated wood, I think. Um, when you make this frame, you know, you're gonna have your one by six there and then your one by six here, then you wanna attach one of your uh, two by sixes that's cut in half, that's four feet long, and then dry fit it with the insulation in there and then come back and attach the second one, okay? Because chances are 
your measurements are not going to be perfect or something and you don't want to be stuck with a frame that's too small for your poly iso insulation so that's